Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Star Simpson. It's good to be here. Good to see you all. Um, I want to talk to you today about doing things in creative projects that nobody else would do in order to get results that no one else has. So here's me. Since last November, I've been working on building a classic electronics projects into kits for the current age. It's called Circuit Classics. And uh, someone described it earlier as, uh, as being like paint by numbers for electronics. I like that. These are the kits. Um, it's a great project. It's a lot of fun. It's great for anyone who wants to get a little taste for electronics in about an hour. Um, and uh, right now, it's a set of three electronics kits. Um, these are the three. One's called the Dual LED Flasher. One's called the Stepped Tone Generator. And one's called the Bar Graph Voltage Indicator. And you know why those three? So I've taken these projects all out of a book um, called Getting Started in Electronics. And uh, it was published in 1982 and carried in Radio Shack for the 34 years since then. Um, and it's a very niche book. But if you've heard of it, it's, it's like very, very well loved. This is the book. Um, basically, anyone who works in hardware, as, as I do uh, in this generation, or the previous two, if you've taught yourself electronics or you know someone who has, chances are they learned from this book. Um, it's actually mind-boggling to me. This, this is probably the only book on electronics I've ever heard of that has sold over a million copies. It's unreal. And this is the inside of it. Um, it's great. The whole book is, is drawn by hand in pencil. And I'm pretty sure that if that book had come out this year, Forrest Mims, the author, would be speaking here at XOXO <laughs> and not me. Um, I, really, I really honestly think the work he did on this book is amazing. And I know electrical engineers to this day who think of electrons as being those little M&M guys. <laughs> um, now, this is Forrest. Lives in Texas. Um, still doing science and engineering things today. I've gotten to know him a little bit through the process of turning the kits in the book, uh, turning the book into kits. Um, and I learned this thing that blew my mind. This book is 125 pages long. It's filled with like over 100 projects. He wrote the whole thing in 56 days. Um, and he wrote it in mechanical pencil. He tried using India ink, but it made his fingers bleed. So none of that. Um, and he also assembled every project in that book four times to check for errors before the book published inside of those 56 days. So that's humbling. I've been working on this since November. <laughs> um, building hardware takes a little longer. Um, so I finished design in March. I spent April prepping to launch it. And I lost all of May to a crowdfunding campaign. Um, and you know, I, I will say that when you're building hardware, uh, you know, you finish the design, you ship it off. Um, it takes about two weeks to get it back in the mail again. So those two weeks add up quickly. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I'm here because Andy asked me uh, to speak about what was hard about doing that. And I don't know where Andy is, but I just want to ask, like, hey, Andy, wherever you are, what makes you think I'm done? <laughs> Not done yet. Um, I am on schedule to ship at the end of this month. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, so if you want to know what someone looks like who's in the middle of shipping, <laughs> it's me right now. <laughs> Um, actually, the last month has been great. I was not as worried about shipping because I had to also worry about my XOXO talk. So that was awesome. Um, and in fact, um, this picture here I thought was good to work in because this is actually, as you see, it says PDX. Um, Wednesday night, I got my final circuit boards from the board manufacturer. I was so excited. Um, I put them together that night and had a flight here to Portland the next morning. And I needed to send a backers update. So I threw the boards in my bag. And then as, as soon as I got here to Portland, that's, I ironed the bed <laughs> <laughs> to use as a backdrop to take photos to send to my backers, um, which 
leads in here to you know kind of what I want to talk about because you know that's to me part of the like never told story behind the scenes of getting something made. So let's talk about getting things made. I have gifts. <laughs> um, I've always loved trying to understand how things get made. I mean, I've been fascinated with it forever. I can stare at these forever. Um, but I think it's a lot harder to come into the insights about like, you know, what factors shape the human being behind the thing that's getting made. So that's my current fascination. Um, and I'm really glad, you know, XOXO kind of exists to talk about that, which is really cool, you know, and, and I think there are some talks that talk about, you know, there are the days when you just can't bring yourself to do the work, and those days go into your project just as much as the days when you know where your enthusiasm is. It all, it all goes into the project, you know, together. Um, and I also want to say, I think it's an incredible luxury to get to do this work to have this be my work, I recognize this. None of this, none of this is like truly, I think, hard, um, but that doesn't mean it's always easy and that there aren't challenges. Um, so from that point on, I started thinking more about you know, the behind the scenes parts of getting any project made. So here's behind the scenes. That's my desk. Okay, I mean, I love it. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, you know, the first, the first part of this project was basically purely circuit board design. And, like, 14 hours a day of me sitting in that chair. Um, and it went so quickly, it was unreal. Um, I, basically, I would just wake up and start designing electronics immediately. So, you know, we talk about our commute. We have a commute to work. Um, this is my shortest commute ever. It's about 10 feet. <laughs> I hope I never have a shorter commute. <laughs> um, it, you know, and, and to be honest, this isn't too much different than any graphic design project. I think you know, designing electronics is fundamentally the same sort of rearranging images on a screen and then just seeing how they work and how they come out. Um, so I you know, spend all this time polishing and honing it. And you know, at first, I was like so into this. Because when you sit down for 14 hours a day, this is like the best excuse to just listen to music. It's really great. I was, you know, like, I'd like to claim, let's pretend I was listening to Vivaldi. It's like, no, it was like my favorite SoundCloud tracks that I never get to listen to the whole way through that are like an hour long. So I was like, you know, really getting into it. I designed circuit boards, listen, I'd be like, I'm going to listen to that one tomorrow. And I don't know about you guys, but I need to listen to like the same music over and over on repeat. That's just how it works for me. Um, but eventually, like, that started to get old. <laughs> So I switched to watching movies instead. So this was, I think, close to New Year's or something. Here's me still doing the work. And I started watching this movie called In the Mood for Love. Um, yeah. Sweet. I, I was just like, no one knows about this movie, but it's great. It's so great. Um, and it's, it's kind of an unreal movie. So I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, it's, very, it's an incredible story. It takes place, the story takes place over the course of like 10 years. It's very like gradual. Um, the movie itself is like an hour and 40 minutes long and has like almost no dialogue. Um, so the whole story is told through sort of just like facial expressions and gestures and like what color the woman's dress is. It's like it's so delicate. I must have watched that movie like eight times <laughs> and in the course of like designing the circuit board project. And, I, and you know, I started getting even more into it and just started to wonder, what does it take to make that type of art? What does that take? What is involved in there? So then, I'm still designing circuit boards. I started watching like director interviews about how the movie was made. This all comes back, I promise. Um, and uh, you know, I'm waiting for my graphics to import and whatever it is. And I started watching an interview. This is the director Wong Kar Wai speaking to Martin Scorsese, who asks him, "What does it take? Like, how do you get to such?" delicate expression from the actors you work with. How does that work? And he's like, oh, like pretty easy. Um, we're pretty direct answer. I just ask the actors to act at half speed. And then I film them with a high speed camera and play it back like it's normal time. <laughs> and I really loved that. Because <laughs> on the one hand, pretty straightforward. No tricks. On the other hand, who does that? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I guess.
this if you're a professional actor and someone was like, act at half speed, I guess you should be able to do that. <laughs> Never thought of it. And uh, you know, as I was going through the process of figuring out how to put graphics on a circuit board, which takes forever, um, you know, I, I tied it, you know, I started to understand uh, a little bit about that process better. Um, there's a lot more to go into the, on that. Um, I think that, you know, that story is also fascinating. The movie almost didn't get made because of the financial crash of 1999. Like, if you've ever done a crowdfunding campaign, you know how stressful that is. I can't even imagine. Um, so, you know, there were many parallels that I found. Um, but in any case, um, in my specific case, it's you know, very difficult to put graphics onto a circuit board. Um, I don't know if anyone here has ever tried it. I feel for you if you have. Please don't raise your hand. Um, because all of the electronics tools I use are basically designed to be used inside of office parks in buildings with no windows to make products that no one's ever meant to look at that live inside all of the products in your house. So figuring out how to get these graphics, these hand-drawn schematics, onto a circuit board so someone who wants to understand how electronics work can have something to look at um, was, was no, no easy task by even the finest imaginations in this room. Um, I used a, pro a program called Eagle. This is what that looks like. Um, this is my little hardware engineer's take on big data. <laughs> um, it's probably like megabytes. <laughs> And it was only through like stringing together this nightmare of like tracing PDFs to create DXF files to import it into the computer, you know, electronics program as like a polygon. It would take like four, five hours to import. This is a smarter person would have given up easily. And if you want a sense for how unusual this is, this is an email I got from my board manufacturer. please don't do this. <laughs> um, they were so on board once I explained what I was trying to do. Um, but that was my little sign about how rare, rarely this happens. But yet, here's how it came out. And I think it makes all the difference if someone's trying to learn to have the explanation like right there on the circuit board. So basically it was something you know, I couldn't compromise on that these boards contain their own explanation and it's, it's all right there, no matter how hard it is. Another thing a smarter person would have done is not cut 16 revs of the dual LED flasher. That's the simplest piece of electronics that does anything interesting. It has nine components. That's 16 different. <laughs> edits to get it right. Uh, and you can see there's a little uh, chain here of the prototypes as I got them and, and they changed and developed. Um, I don't think I would recommend to anyone else to try and uh, hone getting copper behind the graphics to form the notebook lines <laughs> just so someone could feel like it was still on the page of the book. Um, and uh, yeah. I, I don't think that normally you, I would recommend trying to figure out the exactly perfect shade of blue to make the circuit boards because green is typical but scary looking and I wanted it to be a little more appealing to someone who's just getting started. Big shout out to Bay Area Circuits who made this possible at all. Um, and this is the photo from that bed, by the way. <laughs> Thank you.